Everybody, that was Jeff Pitchell's Fat Cigar you were listening to, and that means it's time for Not Just Blowing Smoke. Coming at you live from Twin Smoke Shop Studio Headquarters in Hooks at New Hampshire. Be sure to subscribe to us on Podbean, iHeartRadio, Spotify, iTunes, Google, basically wherever you get your podcasts from. I am Pastor Padrone, and I'm here with my fellow co-hosts, Paul, Nick, and Dave. Ooh. And today's show is the best bang for the buck we're going to be talking about how you can smoke really good and still have money in your wallet to go out to mcdonald's or burger king or burger or wendy's king. or wendy's yeah and what we are smoking to showcase this is the charter oak broadleaf grande from foundation cigars it is a Connecticut Broadleaf a wrapper, Nicaraguan Habano binder, and Nicaraguan tobacco on the filler from Esteli and Jalapa. It is a 6 by 60 cigar. It's got a closed foot. Yes, it does. It lights really well. This is one of Paul's favorite cigars. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Especially it should be called the Paul. Yeah. If Nick was... Thinking about Paul when he made this cigar, uh, he might have done that. <laughs> However, he wasn't. He was actually thinking about his grandfather, who ex- smoked exclusively broadleaf cigars, particularly ones manufactured by F.D. Graves on State Street in Connecticut. 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 Now, the Charter Oak, you know, brand gets its name from the famous Charter Oak tree, which was an ancient white oak that grew on a hill in hartford way back when it uh, is no longer there it was blown over in a storm on august 21st 1856 at that time the tree was already about a thousand years old indians had been using the tree as a gauge to learn when to plant their crops they'd been looking at it for hundreds of years to help them out now the tree got the name charter oak in uh, 1686, when King James II attempted to revoke Connecticut's original charter that had been given to them by King Charles II in 1662, they spirited it, it away from the Brits who were coming for it and asking for it back and hid it in a hollow in the oak tree. And from that day on, it was known as the Charter Oak and became a symbol of independence in the colonies and is one of Connecticut's big, big state symbols. Uh, Paul. Pastor. What are we pairing with this wonderful cigar? All right. It's such a rich heritage. So as we were talking earlier this morning about what we should pair this wonderful cigar with, I had an idea. Uh, that I was you had an idea. I had an idea, and I was kind of looking had online a little bit to see what it was, what my idea, idea, how to make it come into fruition. Fruition, fruition, uh, That's and a then, big word. But then, after fruition. speaking with the potion master when she came in, she immediately shot it down. She slapped it down. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not that she didn't think it was a good pairing, but she didn't have the uh, the the liquor, the, the primarily the Jamaican rum that I was hoping to utilize uh, in the drink here so she steered me right she immediately said you know what with that type of cigar and based on what i'm you're telling me about the pipe tobacco i think this type of coffee drink would go well with this and the reason why we're drinking coffee drinks primarily why and i'm, I'm going to say selfishly 
because I love the cigar mm. with a cup of coffee. Mm -hmm. It is my favorite morning smoke. It is a ritual. Yes, it is. Thanks, yes. Dave. Um, ritual. So she said, why don't you pair the coffee with Jameson Cold Brew mm. and Bailey's? And Bailey's. And boy, was she right. She was. She's the potion master for a reason. Yes, she is. Mm, she Excellent. could be coming back soon, too. Very I'm smooth. Very excited about that. And I want to know how Nick thinks about the pairing. Well, At least about the drink. We'll get to the, the pairing in a minute, but how about the drink? The drink The drink is... Uh, I don't taste no Jameson. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a cold brew Jameson, so I've tasted that before just on its own, and it's very coffee-like. It is pretty smooth. It's very low in alcohol level. Um, <laughs> which is why it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a nice drink. It's okay, Nick. It's a nice drink. It's okay. Drink. Sixty proof ain't bad. No. I despise it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no I idea don't. what proof it is. Actually, do you know it's, what it uh, is? I believe it's. Well, I believe it's thirty. Yeah, 35. it's very low. Yeah, thirty-five. 35. It's, yeah, it's, it's very low. Yeah. Yeah. I could sip that. Uh, it's one, only like a, six beers. It sucks. I guess so. Um, <laughs> Tell us what you really think, but the, Dave. But the, the drink is good. It's coffee-like. You get. You definitely taste the creaminess of the Baileys. Um, and it's good for what it is. Yeah. And the only reason why yeah. I asked if you Nick can't is because taste the creaminess of Baileys, something is. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what it is. But it's it's, it's, it's a good drink. It's Paul can make liqueur. a good. Drink. It's only because you don't drink coffee is why I wanted to get your yeah. opinion on it. I, I I'm not a coffee drinker. I don't drink coffee. I stay away from the stuff. Um, why? Uh, it's not human. It does not uh, agree with my stomach. Um, mm. But pre-workout does. But pre-workout and all <laughs> workout supplements in the amount of bourbon and whiskey that I drink <laughs> on a daily basis, that helps me uh, go get through my day. Um, okay. But uh, keeps you regular, <laughs> brother. <laughs> keeps me on the level. But the, the drink is really good, though. I, I give it up to Paul for making the drink. Really, really nice. Very good. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dave, do you have anything to say about the uh, cigar and the pairing? I think the pairing is uh, excellent. Yeah, the uh, the coffee really brings out the uh, the cocoa and the uh, and the cigar. Kind mm -hmm. um, uh, there was like a little. There was uh, a little bit of sweetness before. I think that's gone. Um, in and it's what? more, it's more the cigar. in the cigar. And now it's, uh, now it's a lot more. Doesn't have enough sugars. Earthy, I would say, very earthy and cocoa. Now, Paul, I'm curious as to what you think, being the coffee connoisseur that mm -hmm. you are. Mm -hmm. Retro hails off. And you have coffee with this cigar all the time. Correct. Mm -hmm. um, so you kind of have a, a really good idea about how coffee pairs with this. And Correct. We're doing something that you have not done before. Correct. Having the the Jameson's cold brew and Bailey's with the coffee, mm -hmm. how are you liking this pairing? First, I want to say that I when I drink coffee with the cigar, I drink it black, so mm. I'm able to pick up all the flavors of the cigar. The cigar on its own, uh, just a wonderful uh, combination of cedar, earth, cocoa, some spice, very well rounded, and I don't mm. mean that. There's no pun with that at all. It is a very well-rounded well cigar. <laughs> Look at this cigar. It is a beautifully mm, nice is. and dark Connecticut broadleaf wrapper. Closed foot. When you light it, you get those first few puffs. You can taste that broadleaf, uh, the broadleaf, wrapper. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just wonderful. With this drink, I do agree with Dave that it is because it is sweetened with the Baileys. Mm. Uh, it is taking away the sweetness of the cigar a bit. I do get a lot more earth, cocoa, a little bit of spice, mm -hmm. it's a little bit muted. Um, but I still think it's a very good pairing. Yeah, it, it, the drink is really making the cigars, uh, cocoa components come out for me. Yep. yep. And the cocoa those drink. darker, yeah, like dark, dark, cocoa. dark cocoa notes, along with the the um, Baileys and the drink especially, just yeah. really, really go well. There are natural coffee notes, I believe, in the cigar, and so that really pairs well with the coffee. Um, I think it's a very good one. <laughs> yeah. I've been enjoying it so Oof. far. Yeah. Um, Excuse me. And you know, thank you. Kudos to Nick Melillo. You know, he, these cigars. There's there's never any soft spots on them. No. They always look good. They always burn good. Have you ever had a Charter Oak that that was had had you know construction issues, Paul? You no. smoke these more than anybody. No, I probably have smoked 
uh, in Nick in Nick's terms, boxes mm -hmm. of them, and yeah. uh, and I have never had a bad one. No. And yeah. this is this this particular size, the Grande, is my preferred size. It is. I've smoked all the different sizes, uh, the uh, Rothschild right up to the Grande, and I always keep coming back to this one. Why this one? I th I still think it is the the I get the most flavor out of it, and I know that goes against you know the grain in terms of what we tell clients that the smaller ring gauges generally bring out the most flavor but in this case I, I actually tend to go towards the larger ring gauge because I get the most flavor out of it I have spoken <laughs> this is the way he has spoken I usually go towards the Toro in this I bought a few boxes of the Toro Maduro um, it's a little smaller ring gauge your regular uh, 52 ring gauge by yep. six, uh, six inches and I like the Toro a little bit better um, I think the Connecticut Broadleaf comes through a little bit better on the Toro, in my opinion. Um, you get more of the earth and the, uh, the cocoa notes in that. But the 60 is, is a home run for me. This is, yeah, it's a very, very flavorful yeah. cigar. You don't get that type of flavor in a lot of cigars that when you, uh, when you get, get, when you get into yet. the 60. Yep. Um, but Nick Melillo, he does it right, man. Yep. He does it right. Bravo mm -hmm. to him. And six Bravo. bucks. Six oh, dollars. Yeah. I know. That's five like five ninety nine. Craziness. And you know, that's one of the reasons we are showcasing this. Um we wanted to do a show, you know, on cigars that you could smoke and really, really enjoy for under ten bucks. Um, I have always believed that you can smoke a genuine world class cigar for ten dollars or less. You do not need to spend a whole bunch of money to get a great cigar. Are there great cigars for over ten bucks, over twenty bucks, over thirty bucks? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. absolutely. But they do not have a, mon a monopoly on it. And sometimes I think we have this idea that if we're spending more, we're getting more, and that is not always the case. This cigar is uh, exhibit number one uh, to my point on that. Um, I would pay a couple dollars more for this cigar. Yeah. And still mm -hmm. feel like I was getting a good deal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, this smokes really, really well. Yeah. And it's only six bucks. Now, Nick, if you're watching, that is not an invitation for you to bump up the price on right? this. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you this is a great deal. Don't don't be hurt me in the background, okay? I'm don't trying to help up. you. I'm trying to help you here. Yep. All right. Now, um, what are some reasons that you would want to spend less than ten bucks on a cigar? What are, What are some things that drive that uh, desire to get a cigar that's a, a really good deal, a really great value? I hesitate to use the word cheap, mm -hmm. but you know, let's face it, some people mm, are short cheap. money. Short money. You know, what are some of the reasons that you would want to look for things like this cigar? It's budget reasons, really. For, mm -hmm. uh, and from my own perspective, and I know how many cigars I smoke in a day, specifically uh, in the too. summertime. <laughs> so in the summertime, I'm going to smoke anywhere from five to six cigars a day. All right. <laughs> and that... <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of smoking, Paul. It that's is. That's a lot of smoking. It is. Um, and But that's the reason why I, I tend oh, to go yeah. for cigars uh, under $10 and a lot of times under $8, realistically. Mm -hmm. I can find a lot of great cigars in our humidor for under 8 bucks. Mm -hmm. um, and so when you factor in six, you know, five to six a day, you know, times seven, times, you know, th you, you, keep, you keep adding it up, you can, re you can, you can go broke. <laughs> so, so I mean, you know, I want to retire someday, so I can't blow all my money. <laughs> yeah, but so that's the reason why, for me, uh, getting a, a, a inexpensive uh, value cigar, uh, a lot of times is is my pre is my well my, my preference. That's it's what you're looking. It's for. what I'm looking for. It's what you're looking yeah. for. I yeah, I mean, it's it's just necessity. So, uh, and again, I'm, I I tell clients this all the time: you don't have to spend more than ten dollars. To find a really, really good cigar, mm -hmm. and yeah, most man. of most of mine, most of my favorite cigars are going to be well under ten dollars. Yep, yep. Cigar smoking can be a very expensive hobby. I mean, even at six dollars a cigar, if you're doing five or six a day, you know, five six days a week, mm -hmm. that can add up. Yep. So you can imagine if you're buying ten or twelve dollar cigars or fifteen dollar cigars. Yeah. Just absolutely. how expensive that gets. 
you know, I, I can't remember what movie it was, but uh, I remember some guy saying that cigar smoking was more expensive than crack. You know, it was, it was, <laughs> you know, it's, it can get really up there. Well, a lot of so, people who quit smoking cigarettes uh, and started smoking cigars think they're going to save money. And then when they get into it, they realize they're not going to save any money. Right. They actually could spend more money if you really factor in it. They're going to be, uh, you know, smoking five, six, you know, eight cigars a day. They're going to, they're going to, they're going to blow the budget pretty mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah, unless they're doing these value unless they're doing types, these ones, these value yeah, type yeah, cigars. Exactly. You know, if you're doing five, if you're doing five of these, you're looking at you know twenty five, you know thirty bucks, depending right. on the size you get. Right. You know, now carton of cigarettes. If you're doing that in a day, you know that's eight bucks, ten bucks, whatever. Well, that's well, that's if, you're, oh, if you're doing oh, a carton, that's yeah, 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 that's yeah, yeah, seventy five yeah. up, up to hundred, like seventy five to hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depending so on what you're buying. If you're a three pack a day guy, it's probably about even. Yep. You yep. know, so yep. you know it really it really depends on what you're doing. Um, certainly, cigar smoking, you know, is is much better for you and your oh, lungs yeah. than cigarette smoking. You know, so even Correct. if you're spending more money, if if you can get off of the cigarette smoking, maybe that's a good thing. But um, certainly, saving money uh, is one of the reasons for doing that. Um, you know, another reason I think um, these kind of value cigars are important to know about is because they're great any time of day cigars mm -hmm. you know you know this this cigar is great in the morning with with a cup of coffee or whatever it's great in the afternoon it's got enough going on that you could have it in the evening here's a, a cigar that you can have just about any time anywhere it's medium bodied right yep. correct you know yep. it's not a super strong cigar um you know it's it's not really you know mild either um maybe not everybody could smoke this Right. But I think if I think if you were a more mild cigar smoker and you took your time with this and maybe had it with some, you know, like a sweet cup of coffee, have some sugar to counteract the the nicotine. Mm -hmm. I think I think that you could do that. This is this is not an unapproachable cigar. Nope. No, no, nope, it's very no. approachable. But Nick also makes the the Connecticut. Yep. Also, so if this is a little out of your wheelhouse or you're just beginning just getting into cigars and you just kind of want to stay on the lighter side the the connecticut version of this cigar is an amazing cigar too it is it's very very tasty it's one of my favorite connecticut's that's out there because mm -hmm. it's got so much flavor going on there and we yeah. also just got in recently the habano version mm -hmm. which yeah. is yeah. amazing too which yeah, is really good, good. Mm -hmm. yep. and another good reason is uh for bringing new people into smoking cigars you know, a cheaper cigar, you don't want them to throw it away, so you're not worried about it because of the price. Good thing to bring to weddings, bring to events. Uh, those are other really good that's another. That's another great, great uh, point, Dave. Yeah, cigars for handing out to people. You know, uh, cigar people are, yeah, as a rule, very, very generous. I have found they love sharing uh, the cigars that they love. And when people want to come over and want to smoke a cigar, um, it is a, it's an awesome thing to be able to hand out a cigar to somebody. Yeah. And um, as somebody who really enjoys cigars a lot, I want to be able to hand out cigars that I think people will enjoy that I, I don't have to think I'm handing out, you know, a dog rocket, something I wouldn't smoke. And yet, if that person is not really a big cigar smoker or, um, you know, I know they're not going to maybe appreciate you know, a, a higher end cigar, I'll give them one of these. And then it's, you know, I actually had a friend of mine who had two humidors. One, he had all of his really, really nice higher end, his, the Cubans that he had, this, his favorite cigars. And it was in this really but ugly humidor. And then in this really nice, gorgeous humidor, he had charter oaks and other things <laughs> and he'd taken the bands off of them and everything right and lifts it up says you guys can have whatever you want out of this humidor and people think oh he's giving us the good stuff they go and they get yeah. it you know but oh, yeah. you know he's so he feels good about it they have a great experience yep. but his private stash is safe <laughs> it is protected from the paws of the uh cigar smoking minions that are out there now excellent what 
Oh, I, w I want to talk about now is what are some of your favorite cigars for under 10 bucks? And, um, Paul, I'll start with you. What's what's one of your favorite? Uh, oh, I can I can answer that for Paul. Well, <laughs> I, I, well this, this this is our this is okay. got to be go one of them. Yeah. All right. Okay. I I think everyone knows what my all time favorite cigar for is. under ten bucks for, for under ten bucks seven seventy five in the humidor. It's the cigar cigar Brevet from Brevet. Brevet. You know, yep. it's, it's a yep. repeat, right? We've, yep. we've we've talked about this yep. numerous yep. times, but that is a phenomenal cigar. Uh, earthy cedar floral notes. Uh, cocoa, um, just a wonderful the box pressing on that. Just just really uh, intensifies the the flavors for me. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely one of my uh, all time favorites. Uh, another one that's in the humidor too, AJ Fernandez Last Call, the, and specifically the Maduro between five to six dollars. That Pennsylvania Broadleaf. Yep. Yeah. Really, really uh, medium, medium plus smoke. Great flavor out of that. Uh, that's just a, a wonderful, another value cigar. Yep. Um, what really, uh, in the last few months has really kind of vaulted into my, uh, value cigar line is the Perdomo 10 year Maduro Robusto. Mm. That seven, goes for seven ninety nine. Oh yeah. That's mm -hmm. another wonderful medium smoke. Lots of espresso, cocoa notes out of that. Not a lot yep. of spice. It's a Nicaraguan Puro. Uh, but I think uh, Nick Perdomo just knocked it out of the park, for me at least, with that yep. line. And that's a very popular line. A lot of people who are looking for a great medium smoke in, in the Maduro line, uh, I've, been, I've been showcasing that here uh, at Twins uh, as an alternative, and they've been, been selling a lot of those. Mm. Um, and then uh, another great cigar I love from CLE is the Winwood Hills. Yes, mm. that's a great one. Great line of cigars. 775. 775. Yep. Uh, you have the... Sumatra, the Corojo, and the Maduro. And the Broadleaf Maduro. Oh, yeah. yes. That's, yeah, that's a good one. That's a great, great cigar. That Corojo. That might may Even have though it's a small cigar that's mm -hmm. Rothschild size, mm -hmm. that thing can smoke For forever. Yeah. That yeah. thing is an hour smoke. Yep. I try to get everybody into that if they're going to the CLE, which we have a lot of customers that tend to go to the Connecticut mm -hmm. um, or some of the Corojo uh, varieties that they have. I always try to, you know, Get them towards that windward because that's a great value, great smoke. And they're like, oh, well, it's too small. It's going to go quick. And I tell them, that thing smokes for about 45 minutes. And I'm a power smoker, and I've had that thing for 45 minutes, and I'm not even at the nub yet. That thing is a good smoke. Yep. That says a lot. It does. That says a lot. Dave. Dave. Um, you want to tell us about some of your favorite? My my favorite. My favorite, favorite value favorite. cigars. Yeah. Is it the Best bang Temperance for the buck? Brotherly Love? That is one of them. <laughs> that is one of them. But we, yeah, we've already mentioned that Wait, a few times. Roma de Cuba Robusto? Yeah. Yeah. La Roma de Cuba Robusto. <laughs> no, we know you too well, Dave. Oh, yeah. The, what was that, Dave? The, the, the Roma de Cuba Robusto. Aroma. 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 Say it right. La Aroma de Cuba. Right. Say it right. La de Cuba Aroma. <laughs> La Roma de Cuba. <laughs> Lauren, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry, Lauren. Uh, We're sick. We are embarrassed. I'm so sorry, Lauren. It's beautiful, just... dark Connecticut broadleaf surrounded with Nicaraguan binder and fillers. Nicar what? Nicaraguan. <laughs> <laughs> we are really sorry, Lauren. Nicaraguan. Nicaraguan. Nicaraguan tobacco. And my, my new favorite is the Aladino Vintage Rothschild. Mm -hmm. That is oh. a good one. That and the uh, with its abano wrapped around uh, Corojo is just oh. and aged five years. And That's aged correct. Yeah. Years. That's it's why it's aged vintage. Five years before it come, before it comes to us. What a great cigar! Yeah. I can't understand how that thing is six bucks. Hey. I don't. I'm not complaining. It's. it's I it's, mean, there are other well, Rothschilds in the Aladino line. There are. Yeah. They're nine bucks. Yep. yep. So here's one that's been aged for five years. Yep. That's and, six, and it's vintage, meant to meant to give a nod back to the day when, you know, back in Cuba when most of the great cigars were wrapped with Habano and then a binder of Corojo. Mm. So it was, uh, you know, a really good nod to the era. Yep. So dropping knowledge on us. All right. Dropping knowledge, Dave. Yeah. Oh, You've been he, studying. He, he is. Studying. He is no longer 
daved and confused. Oh, I'm still daved and confused. Oh, okay. Yes. You'll never, okay. You'll never stop being daved. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. There's good days and bad days. That's okay. All like. <laughs> so the La Roma de Cuba Robusto mm -hmm. and the Eladino Vintage Selection Rothschild. Rothschild. Nick, good what smokes. about you? What What are your favorite cigars under $10? Favorite cigars under ten dollars? I don't have any. Well, if I do. If it ain't fourteen bucks, I don't smoke. No, it. no. I I tend to stay under the the ten dollar range. Mm -hmm. Um, when I buy my cigars, because yes. I know that's for me. That's kind of like the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. I do eventually go over. I'll get a Placencia. Oh. I'll get a Padron. Does it take account if you cut it in half? Uh, no, it does not. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Um. Don't, don't. My first on the list. <laughs> my first on the list is going to be the tattoo by Tatuaje, mm -hmm. coming in at five dollars. That is a very good value. Cigar. That was like one of my first cigars that I got into at the five dollar range. Mm -hmm. That's going to be one of my all time favorites under five under ten. Uh, the next one would be your Le Beijou Petit Robusto mm -hmm. at seven twenty five. You still that even though it's a small petite robusto that still smokes for about forty five minutes. You're getting all the rich taste from a regular Le Beijou, whether you're a box press guy, mm -hmm. whether you're a Churchill guy, but it's in a smaller package at half the price. And you know what? That cigar has got to be one of the best selling cigars in that whole line. Yes. Yes. And it's funny. It's it, I I know every place is different, but for us, it's like the box press torpedo mm -hmm. and the sh and the petit, petit robusto. robusto. Mm -hmm. yep. That's it. Everything else moves and moves well, but way behind mm -hmm. the petit robusto. The what and it, it, it really is a great cigar. Really good cigar. My third one would be the Aladino Maduro Casadores. Ooh, that's yeah, a good one. that's a that at that. Box pressed, mm -hmm. six inches by forty-six ring gauge. Mm -hmm. You're looking at eight bucks on that cigar. It's a little bit above uh, the five dollar, seven dollar range, but at that price, you're getting a wonderful cigar. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have an honorable mention of the the uh, what is it the the Flor de Antilles. <coughs> oh yeah. Busto. Yep. Um, That's seven at uh, seven bucks. Yeah. Yep. That's by a really father. good one. Yep. yep. That's a nice cigar. Mm -hmm. Nice medium bodied. Um, let me share some of my picks here. What do you got? Mm. Well, the first one I wanted to talk about was uh, the 724 original Dog Walker. 635. It is a great, great cigar. And this cigar has everything but the kitchen sink in it. It's the Brazilian Montefina wrapper, which okay. smells amazing. Uh, Costa Rica binder, and then Nicaragua, Honduran, Mexican, and Colombia. Basically, all of South America is in this cigar. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Central America, you know, and it is just really, really tasty. And again, for just a little over six bucks, it is a great cigar. Yeah, it's going to, you know, it's a 20 to 30 minute smoke. But it is fantastic. Oh, yeah. And very, very good. Uh, going from the very small to the very large, um, the Bolivar uh, Cofreda Churchill. Mm. Yeah. Seven bucks? Seven by 54, 650. Ooh. For nice. a mere 15 more cents, you can go from the Petite Corona to <laughs> the Mega yeah. Churchill, Churchill cigar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper and binder, and then Honduran and Nicaraguan fillers. It is a fantastic cigar mm. for the price. It is uh, really, really good. Presented by Estelle Padron himself. Yes, yes. And then uh, I'm going to highlight uh, an Aladino as well, the, um, Ale uh, the uh, Elegantes. In the Maduro. Oh, yes. Yeah. yes, those Lanceros. That is a, Lan a 7 by 38 Lancero San Andreas wrapper and Corojo binder and filler, Honduran Corojo binder and filler. 750 mm -hmm. for an incredible Lancero cigar. If you're a Lancero guy, that's Very, very good. You know, to find a Lancero that's that inexpensive. It's tough. And Get back to cool. have one that's that good. And again, it's 45 minutes or an hour to smoke. Mm -hmm. It is a really great cigar. And one of those cigars I think that gets overlooked a lot mm -hmm. in the humidor. Um, 
And so, you, you know, you can see we've had several Aladino choices here. Aladino is a great brand that makes very, very reasonably priced cigars. Mm -hmm. And uh, those are all great choices. Um, Pastor Padron would also have to recommend the uh, Padron 2000. <laughs> the Padron 2000, uh, specifically the Maduro, but the Maduro and the, the uh, Natural all have the same price. At, at Twins, they're six ninety nine a piece. And, uh, you know, Nicaraguan all the way around. Yep. And a beautiful cigar. That's the cigar that got me my nickname, uh, Pastor Padron. I smoked the 2000s, you know, on my lunch breaks. And um, one time I walked into the shop and Jorge says, Oh, look who it is, Pastor Padron. Oh. And it's stuck. It's been 20 <laughs> years. I haven't been able to shake it. But, you know, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So keep keep that. So, those are our recommendations. Are there anything? Is there anything else that uh, you want to bring up while we're talking about stuff? Nick Sticks. Nick Sticks is another great. The, By uh, Nick Perdomo, yep, yeah. Those five are, to six dollars a piece. Yep, the Maduro, preferably. <laughs> yep. Toro Maduro. Um, that yeah, the Toro or the Robusto mm -hmm. or the Torpedo or the Churchill. One, you know, one or the other. Um, those are all under seven dollars, and those yep. are fantastic cigars. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that is a good segue, I think, right into Pastor Padron's Cigar Confession. Mm. I feel like we haven't done that in a while. Mm. <laughs> it's been 10 days. That it has. And my Cigar Confession this week is don't be a cigar snob. <laughs> that goes right in with what we're talking about. You can really smoke great world-class cigars for under 10 bucks just because you paid more or just because a cigar costs more does not necessarily mean it's a better cigar absolutely not so don't be throwing that in anybody's face don't be giving people you know grief because they're smoking a five dollar cigar or a six dollar cigar we've just given you eight nine choices of cigars that are all really really good for well under 10 bucks you do not need to smoke really really expensive cigars to enjoy a really great cigar and there's nothing more annoying to me than somebody who kind of gives you that look because you're not smoking up got a fire cigar <laughs> you know, no no name drop i have i have no i have dropping. gone i have gone into cigar shops where i've gone for my padron 3000 2000 and you know they're like really that's all you're getting yeah it's all i'm getting are you trying to guilt trip me into getting something else mm. no come on don't be doing that don't be a snob Smoke what you like, just don't be a snob about it, okay? That's my cigar confession for the week. Does anyone have anything to say to that? I concur. You concur? I also concur. You concur? I concur. And Dave yes. confers by... The soundboard. The soundboard, yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right. Um... What is our final verdict here, then, on the Charter Oak Broadleaf Grande from Foundation Cigars? Excellent. Just an absolutely superb value cigar. It really, really is. This, this, this should be on everyone's uh, list of cigars that they can smoke on a daily basis, who likes a nice, medium body smoke, who uh, really appreciates the wonderful earthy cocoa, uh, a little bit of spice there, and as, as I'm getting into the the second, almost yeah, you know, midway through the second half of it, uh, the spice is maybe maybe turning up a little bit more towards a pepper note. Uh, the pairing, however, is uh, bringing out a little bit more of the earthy tones, cocoa, yeah. uh, taking away just a little bit of sweetness. Although there's still some natural sweetness I'm getting from the cigar, mm -hmm. but overall, just an absolutely fantastic cigar. You got to get one of these, Nick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Smoke yeah. it if you got it. Smoke, Smoke it. it if you got it. Uh, great value. Great cigar. Unbelievable construction. Mm -hmm. Great burn line. 
It, what else can I say? The the cigar is a must buy at six seven bucks, and the box 107 106 for twenty cigars. That's a that's a that's a buy in my book right yep. there. Um, the drink. <laughs> it's it's coffee flavored, so um, you're also I, I give it, with it. However, <laughs> yeah, you are uh, the first one to finish, my friend. That's true, it's but um, than sour apparently. What well, you're gonna do? It. Yeah, it's better than <laughs> sour. But you know, I definitely give it up. Uh, give it to Paul. My hat goes off to Paul for making the drink and uh, making me drink it tonight. Um, Just wait till the second half. Oh God. Mm. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> uh, cigar it's straight drink deadly. was good. Cigar was better, in my opinion. Dave. Dave. Um, thank you, Dave. Even, <laughs> even Cigar Aficionado said this cigar. This cigar, cigar what? <laughs> cigar Aficionado said this cigar was the best cigar under 10 bucks. Uh, and that says something to um, the amount of cocoa that you can get from this cigar is amazing. Um, I think only probably beaten by like, you know, more double price Padrones. Um, the coffee is doing a great job pushing that out as well. Uh, I think it's a great pairing. I do kind of miss the subtle sweetness it usually has, mm -hmm. but the uh, the earthiness and the cocoa is a welcome replacement. Okay, very good. Um, the construction on these is so on point. It is. Uh, all of our cigars are burning great. Yeah. Did anyone have to relight or touch nope. up? No I way. I didn't see anybody. No nope. way. Um, just a One great, light. great cigar. Um, nice, medium bodied, you know, like everybody said, the earth, the cocoa, there's a natural sweetness to the cigar that's really, really nice that comes from the broadleaf. Um, $5.99. This Come is on. a fantastic cigar for the money. Mm -hmm. And uh, not only just for the money, it's a fantastic cigar. It's a great, great cigar. And uh, I highly recommend it. If you're looking for cigars that uh, uh, are not going to break the bank but are going to give you a great experience, Charter Oak is a great place to start. We're going to take our break right now, get ready to go into part two of our show where we are going to discuss pipes and pipe tobacco. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Everybody, welcome back to Not Just Blowing Smoke, and we are doing our pipe tobacco review and sticking with our uh, best bang for the buck, we are sticking with bulk tobacco blends, and the blend that we are all smoking here is a favorite, a long-time favorite, and a bestseller here, thank you, Paul, in the uh, wonderful U.S. of A., Peter Stokelby's luxury bullseye flake let me tell you what tobacco reviews website has about this since it doesn't come in a tin there's no tin description but presumably this is something from uh peter stokeby about the tobacco here a blend of ripe virginia tobacco spiced with pure louisiana perique as opposed to unpure uh, I hope it's pure Perique. Mm. Uh, the <laughs> distinctive aroma of Perique combined with the natural sweetness of Virginia tobaccos provides a wonderful characteristic taste. The center of mellow fermented black Cavendish serves to smoothen the original impression and rounding the taste. It is all a handcraft process from selecting the best tobacco, blending, rolling, cutting, and packing. The result is an unparalleled smoking experience this is manufactured by scandinavian tobacco group it is a virginia perique a vapor kind of blend and uh, virginia perique black cavendish no flavoring in this baby and it is a coin cut or a curly cut it's basically uh rolled into a big sausage like thing mm. sausage meat sausage like thing and at the center sausage rope. at the center of the sausage is a, uh, a strip of 
the Cavendish. So there's a, like this little dot of Cavendish in the middle, and then it is sliced real thin into coins, and it looks like a bullseye because there's this little bullseye of Cavendish in the middle of the tobacco, uh, hence the name. And uh, Paul, what are we uh, pairing with this? <laughs> Again, bullseye. To Nick's delight. Yay. <laughs> Again. We're doing more, more of the same. More of the same. I don't know if oh, Jameson, great Cold Brew, Master, Bailey's, you must and come coffee. back soon. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, but it's good. Oh, it is good. Is it? We're not uh, going to sleep tonight. Mm, nope. <laughs> nope. Very, very good stuff. Um, all right. So before we get into talking about other things, uh, initial thoughts on the luxury bullseye flake and the pairing. Dave, I'll start with you. Woo. Thank you, Dave. Woo. Yep. Uh, a Feel lot free of to expand <laughs> on that, Dave. Yeah, right. This is some earth and leather and some fruits from the Virginia. Oh, and then the Perique. I don't know what really the Perique does, but it's there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's got you got like these deep dark um, fruit flavors um, surrounded by some earth and leather. Earth leather. and what? Le le weather. 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 Earth and weather. There's earth weather, weather in here. Yeah. It's very weathery. Yep. Yeah. And a little foggy. <laughs> Mm. Nick, do you have uh, anything else to say? Perhaps something more specific. <laughs> Sweet Virginia's. A lot of tobacco. There's a lot. Like yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why either. Sweet Virginia's. And Sweet Virginia's could a have little... something to do with the Virginia. Yes, definitely. Yes. Um, get a little bit of that. Ca uh, a little bit of that Cavendish in there. Mm -hmm. um, medium body, really oh, yeah. nice, full flavor. Mm -hmm. It's it's a damn good. I see you're smoking it in your 7 Ellie alligator. My Gator. Your Gator 320. My Gator 320. Mm -hmm. Big bowls. That's a gorgeous bite. Yes. Big bowls, and I cannot lie. Mm -hmm. Yep. Go big or go home. That's right, That's baby. Mm -hmm. Love it. Uh, Paul. So I've, Beautiful I've, meat. I've never had the coin slice before mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. um, I lit up a bowl earlier today just to get a test drive of it. Um, and right off the bat, I got a lot of deep fruit. Mm -hmm. Deep fruit with some bready notes, uh, some mm. wood, some uh, earthy notes too, a little bit of spice from the Perique. Uh, just very, very well-balanced, medium-bodied tobacco. I really, really enjoy it. The, with the pairing, I think it's actually bringing out a lot more of the fruit flavors for me. Mm -hmm. It's 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 uh, toning down the earthy notes, uh and maybe a little bit of the wood, and it's bringing a lot more of those deep Virginia fruits. Really, really delicious. Yeah, I'm getting some nice um, wood. Uh, that Greek spice is there. Some light kind of figgy notes, and mm. uh, you know, a little bit of a raisiny spice in there. Mm. The um, um, I find smoking this that the uh, the little bullseye of Cavendish comes and goes. Um, it, depending on how you break it up, you may end up getting a bunch of it all at once. Mm -hmm. And it's this nice, smooth, very creamy, um, almost like a brown sugary kind of uh, taste to it. Um, but uh, very, very nice. And it does, this is another tobacco that pairs very well with coffee. Uh, Virginia Periques, I find, uh, go very well with coffee. Those woody notes and... and uh, earthy notes that you get from it with that little bit of spice kind of goes well with that um very very good i'm enjoying the pairing i think the pairing um the the baileys in there is bringing out for me some some kind of it is bringing out the virginias but to me it's bringing out more of like the kind of hay notes um in the virginias um Yeah, and definitely more of the sweetness mm -hmm. of the Virginias, too. Definitely picking that up. Um, as we're talking about, you know, value smoking, I think, you know, it, it is a natural thing when we start talking about pipes to talk about bulk blends because bulk blends are very inexpensive to buy because you're really not paying for any expensive packaging. You're just paying for the tobacco and 
uh, when you realize just how much money goes into packaging and stuff like that, you can save a lot of money. Um, at Twins, you can get two ounces of most of our bulk tobaccos for under seven bucks. And to kind of put that in perspective, that ends up being uh, under 50 cents for a bowl of tobacco. Mm. Uh, it is a really inexpensive way to smoke uh, a pipe. And um, I'm wondering what some of your favorite bulk tobaccos are mm -hmm. that we have. Mine um, would be Autumn Evening mm -hmm. and uh, Haunted Bookshop. Absolutely. Those are my top two. Yep, Autumn Evening is a aromatic from Cornell and Deal. It's a Virginia Cavendish with a maple topping. Um, that stuff smells like waffles and tastes like maple syrup. And it's just it's amazing. That is a good one. It's very, very good. I love that stuff for an aromatic. Oh yeah. It's really, really good. And I love the fact that it's a it's a Virginia Cavendish. Typically Cavendish is more of a burly like it is in this tobacco here. Um, and I think you get a lot out of it that way. Uh, Haunted Bookshop is another uh, Cornell and Deal blend. You can get both of those tobaccos in tins, mm -hmm. but they also sell them in bulk, and we offer them in bulk because that way, you know, you can get more for your money that way. Haunted Bookshop is a Burley, Virginia, and Perique blend, and there are absolutely no flavorings toppings or casings on the tobacco at all it's one of the few tobaccos that they make and frankly one of the few tobaccos on the market where there is literally nothing on top of the tobacco it is a great great nice medium bodied mm. um it's it's like smoking a nice habano cigar. Yeah, you know, nutty. It's you that kind that, of uh, really good nutty, earthy. I, I like that woody note that you get mm -hmm. from there. Woody, little woody and spice that you get from that. That's actually one of my uh, one of my top three. Mm -hmm. The yeah. sweet nuts, sweet nuts. Mm. So for me, my top three, obviously, just like Dave's, autumn evening, mm -hmm. on and bookshop, Portsmouth. Shipyard. Mm. Portsmouth Shipyard, which yes. is Peter Stokelby's Luxury Navy Flake. That's a that for me when I when we first had it on the show, mm -hmm. I was so taken back. I had to go and buy a, a couple bags to leave at my mm. house. So when I'm smoking at my house, right next to the wood fireplace that I got now mm -hmm. going on, um, that's one that I usually put in the pipe. That's a, that's a really good one. I, uh, that's a one of my go tos. Really mm. nice. Definitely one of my go-tos as well for a bulk. Uh, very, very good stuff. It's a uh, Virginian Perique with a little bit of a rum mm -hmm. uh, topping on it. You know, that Navy Flake goodness. It is nice and rich and sweet. Uh, not overly so, mm -mm. you know, um, but it really makes the Virginia, that little bit of rum, I think, makes the Virginia's pop. In that. Do, you have, do you have anything to say about bulk tobaccos paul you're not so much of a pipe guy but no but in in the last year or so since we've been doing the show i really have uh, taken to a couple of them mm -hmm. engine 99 engine 99 Ooh. oh yeah that is a wonderful one. wonderful right on the one. head yep. great great bulk tobaccos what probably one of the best bulk tobaccos that i've had mm. uh the other one was the turkish twist yeah you yeah. know with the little bit of the virginias but also had a little bit of nutty flavor in that mm -hmm. too um, just a little bit more body than a typical straight Virginia. And for those of you wondering, what's Turkish Twist? It's actually Peter Stokeby's Luxury Twist Flake. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we renamed that Turkish Twist here at Twins. And that's what it is. It's a, it's a pressed Virginia. And it is very, very good stuff. Um, I think sometimes, you know, pipe smokers can get, you know, really stuck on buying tins i know i've gotten into that mm. rut before where i'm like um oh, i want a tin i don't want a bulk um but you know just because you're buying bulk doesn't mean you're buying bad stuff and engine 99 is a great mm -hmm. example of that there's a um, english blend that um, uh, 
uh, is a great recommendation for a bulk tobacco. And again, you know, at, at, at Twins anyway, two ounces of that is just under seven, seven bucks. bucks yeah. Just under seven bucks. Um, if we were selling a tin of that, two ounces of that, it would be thirteen fifty. Mm. That's what our Cornell and Deal tins retail for at Twins. Um, so you're getting the same amount of tobacco for just oh, about half oh, the price. Yeah. And um, that can make a big, big difference uh, in somebody's budget. So again, you know, those are, those are great, great examples there of uh, uh, great uh, bulk tobaccos that you can get, from, you know, all over the board. And of course, you know, I'll, I'll talk about it too. Uh, Lane's 1Q. Oh my God. Um, Best seller. I'm not a huge aromatic mm. guy, but I started with 1Q, and it's one of my favorite tobaccos to start people on. Uh, it's a great ribbon cut uh, tobacco. It's a Cavendish in Virginia with a light vanilla topping on it. Um, it has been the best selling tobacco in the United States for decades. And there's a reason for that. It is just the quintessential all-day smoke. Mm. And you are not going to offend anybody by smoking that. That tobacco turns heads. I remember uh, last year, right around this time, actually, we had Max Stokeby, um, Eric Stokeby's uh, son, who is the uh, brand ambassador for Lane and Peter Stokeby Tobaccos for a Scandinavian tobacco group here at the shop, and he was up after our show at uh, the the bar, the uh, 724 Lounge, smoking 1Q, mm -hmm. and person after person came up to him asking him, what was that great stuff he was smoking? And it was it was 1Q, the, the cheapest, you know, most common tobacco there is, and, but it, it, people love it. It's a great, great tobacco that way. So um, here at Twins, we call it Granite State. And um, it's our best-selling bulk pipe tobacco by far. We buy it in five-pound bags. That's mm -hmm. what it comes in the bulk, five-pound bulk bags. And we can't buy enough of that stuff. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. How many um, people smoke that oh, and yeah. how much they smoke through we have people buy it by the pound yeah that's the most it's, popular one by the pound yep definitely the most popular bulk pipe tobacco that we have at twins and that doesn't surprise me in the least um so those are all some great examples of uh tobacco that you can enjoy whether you like aromatics or you like um, traditional virginias or virginia periques or uh, burleys like haunted bookshop or uh, English, like Engine 99. Um, great, great stuff. Now, uh, we did have a viewer question about this that I thought was uh, interesting here. And the question was, is there a difference in quality between bulk and tin tobaccos? Mm, that's a good question. I think people wonder about that because, again, you know, it's almost twice as much to get the tin. So is it like... The really, really good stuff that goes into the tin and leftover or seconds that go into bulk. Um, and uh, I, Pastor Padron, can give you the answer to that. The answer is there is no difference whatsoever. Um, uh, Cornel and Deal, I can talk about very specifically. Uh, they mix all their tobaccos one at a time in a big batch and some of that is going to go into tins some of that is going to go into bulk bags it is all from the same batch of stuff so um, I know the same is true with uh, Scandinavian tobacco group as well they make everything all at once and then put it in different kinds of packaging so you are not chintzing yourself if you decide to pay seven dollars for two ounces of autumn evening versus paying 1350 for a tin of autumn evening you're getting the same stuff what you're paying for is the tin 
and all of the advertising and production costs that go with that. Uh, I know that you can buy one Q uh, as a tin through Scandinavian Tobacco Group as well. Uh, and again, it costs twice as much as getting it in bulk. But it is exactly the same tobacco. So, um, you know, another uh, interesting factoid there is that the Captain Black, a very, very well-known, famous uh, uh, packaged tobacco, the uh, Captain B Black Blue, the Royal, mm -hmm. that's one Q. Yep. Is it really? It's one Q. Yep. So if you know. buy the 1.5 ounce pouch for what, 11 bucks or something like mm -hmm. that, uh, you could be buying two ounces, which is more, for seven bucks. <laughs> yeah. And be smoking exactly the same stuff. Now, interestingly, if you know people tell me that they've tried the 1Q next to their Captain Black Blue and they swear it's different. You just told them. But, you know, I think I think there's a conditioning here that goes on. Um, we, you know, kind of, and that's the power of the band, which which is a maybe a good little sneak peek segue into next week's show. Next week's show is going to be titled, Is It Really All That? We're going to be doing blind tastes Ooh. of name brand cigars and pipe tobacco. And... Um, We'll be doing it blind. One will know what it is that we're smoking. And we're going to find out whether these really hot cigars and pipe tobacco really is all that. Sounds great. It does sound great, doesn't it, Paul? Yes, it does. It mm. does. Um, <laughs> Paul, you have some news for us, I think. I do. What are you talking about this week that is happening in the news, other than this whole election business? Is anyone else thankful that oh. the third is almost over? <laughs> I, just yeah. I just hope it doesn't go to the third of December. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I want this to be over. Mm -hmm. Anyway, oh. what do we got, Paul? Imperial Brands completes 1.44 billion sale of premium cigar business. Oh Ooh. my goodness! This is from Cigar Aficionado. Mm -hmm. Some of the premium cigar industry's most prized assets officially have new owners. Imperial Brands PLC completed the sale of its premium cigar business to an investment consortium for 1.225 billion euros or 1.44 billion dollars. The sale includes a vast array of cigar brands, factories, and companies. 50% of Cuba's Habanos SA, Tabacalera USA, the company that makes them and markets such non-Cuban cigar brands as Monte Cristo, Romeo and Julieta and H. Upman, mm. a pair of cigar factories, including one that's considered the world's largest, Tabacalera de Garcia in the mm. Dominican Republic, and JR Cigars, one of the world's biggest uh, cigar retailer chains. It's one of the biggest sales the cigar industry has ever seen. It also, it's also complex and was split into two transactions. The U.S. division was acquired by a company named Gemstone Investment Holdings Limited, which bought Tabacalera USA, its assets, Altidus USA, which is responsible for the distribution of premium cigars in the United States, on online retailers JR Cigars, Serious Cigars, and Cigars.com, mm -hmm. plus the Casa de Monte, Monte Cristo retail chain. Mm. A company named Allied Cigars Corporation SL acquired the remaining premium cigar assets of Imperial, which includes half of Cuba's Habanos SA, the company that exports all of Cuba's cigars. Both companies involved in the purchase consist of the same consortium of investors, and acquiring companies were incorporated in Hong Kong in March. Mm. They have remained anonymous in this process and were not involved in the tobacco business prior to this deal. The acquisition has gone on for quite some time. The companies reached an agreement to sell half a year ago on April 27th, and they originally hoped to finish the sale by July, but like so many things in 2020, mm -hmm. it has been delayed several times by the pandemic. Mm -hmm. This deal ends Imperial's time in the premium cigar business, but it will continue to own a large machine-made cigar business selling mass-marketed smokes. <sighs> so, is this a good thing or a bad thing? That's a good question. It is yet to be determined. I guess we'll find out. We'll find out. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll find out what uh, Adam, as, Adam has to say. As far as you know, Monte Cristo, Romeo and Juliet, you know, and and aging room and all those that that uh, Altidus offers, we're, we're not really going to see much of a difference. Mm -hmm. This is those cigars are all still going to be made. They're still going to be marketed by Altidus. Altidus is just now owned by a different parent company. A different parent company of anonymous investors. Anonymous investors <laughs> in Hong Kong. Oh, who, yeah. <laughs> the cigarette smoking men <laughs> conspiracy <laughs> continues. <laughs> oh wow! Mm, yes, there you go. Um, what do you think? Would you rather? Would, would you, you rather? rather? Would yes. you rather? We would rather. Okay, the would you rather question of the day. This is going to be a tough one. Oh, boy. <laughs> Dave, I'm going to start with you. Uh -oh. Here we go. Here we go. Because you're my little brother. <laughs> and you really want to know the answer to that question, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Here it is. Mm. Would you rather find a rat in your kitchen mm. or a roach in your bed? Oh. Oh. Rat in the kitchen. I'm all set with roaches. Rat in the kitchen. Why, in the kitchen. why would you rather find a rat in the kitchen, Dave? If I got a roach in my bed, they're there because there's a water problem. And that's just, oh, it's leaks of the worst. Because you're peeing the bed again. <laughs> Rats, you just, you just, you know, you, you find the nest and you deal with it. Roaches, man, God, no, that is a huge headache. I'm all set. Got to bomb the house. Yep. Yep. I'm all set. Yep. Nick. Mm. Roach in the bed or rat in the kitchen? How big is the rat? Is it like as so big they, as like New York rat, rat, like a New York rat, where yeah. it's like well, bigger than a most New York rats? rat? It's going to take you outside, and <laughs> yeah, then we're going to have issues. You won't see Nick again. Oh, no, 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 you will. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to my turkeys? They're all gone. Oh, my God, look at that rat! It's the size of Godzilla. Godzilla. <laughs> it's uh, Godzilla. <laughs> I would. I would do the. I would rather have a rat in the kitchen, where you know you can set some traps. Mm -hmm. outside inside and then <laughs> you can pretty much eradicate them or you can yeah. get you can get a street cat i know a couple people that I, that i know down in lawrence they had some rat problems <laughs> you just go outside get yourself a street cat they take care of the problem real quick mm -hmm. uh the roach <laughs> uh, that's a little bit more you got to call pest control you got to you know what i mean you got to bomb the house you can't go in the house for a few days it's a little bit more work I think a rat problem would be a little bit more easy to deal with. What do you think, Paul? If we ever found a roach in our bed, our bed would be tossed out of that third floor window by my girlfriend <laughs> faster than, you know what. Uh, no, without a doubt, a rat in the kitchen. We usually have a, a, the occasional mouse that appears in the kitchen mm -hmm. or in the drawers, and I just deal with it by traps the cats are useless they, they just look at it and you know <laughs> that's move on we gotta go get on their you. merry way that's we gotta get problem. you a street cat but a rat yeah you, like you say you just deal with you just find the nest and just deal with it and mm -hmm. uh yeah there's no question a rat in the kitchen yeah um i i would do the uh rat in the kitchen that, that if i had to choose and for a reason that i have not heard expressed here i would not be able to sleep yeah yep. again facts if Oof. I would be, I would be, you know, anything that touched my leg. Yeah, yeah. I'd be freaking yeah. out. I think my wife freaking would burn the out. house down. You know, I, I just can't, I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that creepy, you know, something, some bug in your bed. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have like nightmares now. I'm gonna it's, go home and like completely like strip the bed down and toss the mattress. <laughs> yep. It's gonna be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man. I don't know if anybody's seen that viral video that was around at the mouse and there was playing with like Eye of the Tiger. It was like stuck under the mousetrap, and then it just started put doing push-ups with it. <laughs> that's what I think of. I once is, had is that. What you think of, yeah, Dave? That's what I, think. I once had a mouse. That's, that, Nick's, that's Nick's mouse. Yes, that's the mouse, <laughs> the mice that I train. I once had a mouse that ate his own arm off to get out of a trap. Ooh, that was a tough mouse. Yeah, yeah. I had to give. I saw that. I went in one day in the morning. I saw the mouse. I was like, all right, well, it's dead. I, I can get it in a few hours. Came back down. All I seen was his, his hairy little arm there. And I had to tip my hat off to him. I had to tip my a hat off to him. He was, yeah, it was a little blood trail, but <laughs> it was, uh, I had to tip my hat off to him. That's, that's, uh, that's courage right there, my friend. 
Did you ever find him? Give him a little peg leg? And... Nope. Pretty sure. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, a little toothpick. Yeah. Just put it right there. No, I didn't find him. No. <laughs> no. As far as you know, he could still be there. He probably is. He's probably hunting me. He's See, probably uh, in the wall somewhere. My, planning your demise. My, yeah, right? My cats, Paul, are very, very good at finding mice. Those little moles. <laughs> You Can know, I rent they, them from you next, next spring? <laughs> yeah, no, it's you know. Do they bring each my cat? What it's again, like to be a cat again in a in a house as old as mine? You're going to have mice. They yeah, you know, it's, it just it's part of the deal. But these cats, man, they find them and they are extremely proud when they catch something. Who could I found? They you know bring it, put it at the door. They'll sit in front of it. Look what I found, mommy! Isn't it awesome? What kind of cats do you have? They're, I don't know, they're regular cats. See, we have Bengals, and they're 25% wild. All right. Okay. And you, they think, you would think anything. that they would be hunters, and they technically are, but when it comes to, like, they would just stare. Like, they every spring, they know when a mouse is in the drawers. They just sit there on the floor, and they stare. And they and, and my girlfriend told me before even I even met her, when she had them as babies, they found a mouse, but they just played with it. Mm. They didn't do anything. They didn't, they didn't eat it. They didn't, they don't kill it, whatever, they just played around with it and whacked them. But I've got to give no, them some cat. But that's, it, it goes against everything that a wild cat should be. So, I don't know. Maybe they're just too domesticated. Possibility. I don't know. They, they're despoiled. Our cats are, are teased all the time. We have we have a <laughs> lot of birds in the house. We have my, my daughter and my wife are big bird people. Uh, my daughter Maggie has um, a parakeet on your and a lovebird, I think, upstairs. Nice. We have five finches. And a I don't know, in a pear tree? Seven or eight doves. Oh. It started off with two, and the things multiply like freaking rabbits. <laughs> and the cats, you know, the doves and the finches are downstairs, and we've actually lost a, a finch to one of the cats. Ooh. Um, really? Um, but the cats are just sitting there in front of the cage. <laughs> it's, it's, it's yeah it's like it's beautiful like meat. It, 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 yeah, exactly, <laughs> right. exactly what they're thinking. Uh, and you know it's so i think when they finally see a mouse they're like ah let's go get it they're so freaking hungry they're hungry for it paul they're hungry, hungry for, for the blood. kill hungry for the kill Not you got to get those eggs just crack them those little little eggs those little eggs. Yeah, you said they like, multiply, right? You gotta yeah. get the eggs before they sit on them. So that's what I do with the tur the the chickens at home. You gotta get the eggs before they sit on them. Then you crack them, and make some scrambled eggs, man. Well, you know when they're fertilized, it doesn't work like that. Oh, well, you get you get uh. Then you then you get, then you get like chicken something that looks like an alien. No, you, you know, cook it up. Like, you can get uh, some chicken. Oh, crispy. A little crispy chicken. chicken. Little Throw some oil in there. Fry it up. Mm -hmm. it's a little hot sauce. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let you do that, man. That happened um, to me one time. Yeah. Yeah. It's. It's. it's uh, Just kept eating it. Mm. So we got to figure out what to do with these birds. Let them go. You can't just let them go. Can't just Why let not? Be free. You can let them go. I think I, I want to sell them. You could do that. Want to sell them. Well, you could let them go. Or we could let them go. Yeah. yeah. We could use you're a pa you're a, you could do that. You're a rabbit. pastor, right? You can yeah. you can be at a wedding there's and the, be like, oh, look, there's got to go, there's right? There's got to be some local magicians that are looking for some doves, <laughs> you know? There is a gentleman at uh, Tuckaway Tavern that might be looking for uh, for some birds. He's a magician over there. He's yeah. a practicing magician, yeah. Well, I got some practicing doves for him. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. All right. So, what's our final verdict here on the uh, luxury bullseye flake and our repeat pairing of the spiked coffee? I'm, I'm still going to say that the coffee is bringing out a little bit more of the sweetness from the Virginias for me. Mm -hmm. um, again, I'm getting a lot of those bready notes. Uh, some just a just a tad bit of spice. I think the spice has settled down a lot. Um, the the uh, earthy notes, the little bit of uh, wood too. I think it's a great great tobacco. This is really really uh, the, the perique. I think and this brings out a little bit of that spice too. But I really really enjoy this one. Like I said earlier today, I had I had one and had a bowl and I just thought it was a very very. 
uh, well, uh, <laughs> rounded. It, no, 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 that's the cigar, dude. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's just a very well blended, uh, tobacco. I think mm. it's a, it's and for $7 for a two ounce bag. Yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't lose with this one. This is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Nick. Wonderful. Okay. Dave. <laughs> I love okay, them. I'll tell you about. That. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is a. It is easy to understand why this is such a popular tobacco. Um, very very flavorful, nice spice, very smooth. It's got those uh, nice wood hay, uh, some stewed fruit kind of notes from the Virginias, the. Cavendish adds this nice little bit of sweetness to it. The Perique, you know, gives it a little bit of zip, but body. Um, it goes great with the coffee. The cream is, I think, bringing out the sweetness of the Virginias. Um, it certainly also helps you to enjoy more of the spice of the Perique. Very, very good stuff. And, you know, again, you can fill up your pipe for under 50 cents with that stuff. Amazing. At, um, and depending on how big or little your pipe is, it might even be more than that. I mean, that two ounces of tobacco is quite a bit. Depending on your pipe, fifteen to maybe twenty bowls max. Mm. But that's that's a lot of smoking mm -hmm. for, for that little bit of money. And um, so don't be afraid to go out and get some bulks and uh, keep them in your house jars or whatever you like to keep your tobacco in. If you're going to be keeping your tobacco um, for more than, you know, a month or so, get a mason jar or something to put it in it if it's a bulk tobacco. Um, believe it or not, it was not meant to be kept in those plastic bags that your tobacconists give you. Um, the bags that they come in, those huge five-pound bags from the um, factory, those have actually been treated so that the tobacco does not interact with the plastic. Um, but in the, the regular Ziploc bags that we give you so that you can carry it home, um, eventually the tobacco is going to interact with that and you don't want that to happen. So if it's going to, that doesn't happen overnight. So if you're going to be storing it for like more than a month, get a mason jar or something, label it, screw it, and that's going to just last forever in there. Um, really, really good stuff. All right. Next week, November 9th, we're going to be doing Is It Really All That? We already talked a little bit about that. We're going to be doing blind reviews of a cigar and a pipe tobacco. And in the second half of the show, we're going to be joined by Eric Stokeby, Ooh, the right. founder of Fourth Generation Tobacconist, one of the best known names in the pipe world. He is an awesome, awesome, humble guy and really is fourth generation in his family uh, in dealing with pipes and tobacco. Um, and I am really, really excited to have him on the show next week. He'll be joining us via Skype from wherever he is on the planet. Could be here, could be Denmark. I don't know. Depends where he is. But either way, he'll be Skyping in with us next week. You are not going to want to miss that. So make sure you're here next Monday night. November 9th, 8 o'clock, for Not Just Blowing Smoke. We'll see you next week. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thanks, everyone. Another day, another smoke. You've been listening to Not Just Blowing Smoke, the podcast that brings the wealth of knowledge, expertise, and fun of Twins Smoke Shop, New England's premier smoke shop, right to you, wherever you are, whenever you want it. You can find us at our website, notjustblowingsmoke.com, and keep in touch with us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram at Not Just Blowing Smoke. Thanks for listening, everybody. And that is Not Just Blowing Smoke. Rolling with the top.